Go ahead. Am I recording or are you? Okay, hello, welcome everybody. It is Liz Cross and thank you, Mr. Reality, for being here this evening and hosting. And I thought tonight we would do something a little different and go into past life patterns. So those of you that saw the link immediately, you clicked on the link, you came into the room, you raised your hand, and it only took about five minutes to get the first 10 people. Um, so I'm going to try and get through as many as I can. And now that Mr. Reality is here hosting, I most likely will be able to get more than 10, but we'll see how this goes. All right. So first of all, Mr. Reality, it is Paul McCune. If we can unmute Paul, please. Hello. Hello. Paul, you're on the air. Hi, good morning or uh, good evening there in the <laughs> USA. <laughs> Are you working at the moment, Paul? No, this is my first day off. I uh, just finished my night shift and Thursday morning or whatever. So, yeah, I haven't been to bed yet, so I'll go to bed soon. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was just listening to the guys and gals there. You know, I was a bit too tired to, to, to jump in. But, yeah, we're getting ready for this. Looking forward to it. Oh, well, thank you so much. Now, are there any identifiable patterns in your life right now that concern you, or would you like for me to just find one? Uh, yeah, I think you, you could just find one. There's probably quite a few patterns I could probably digress for a few hours on about my chaotic life, but we'll, we'll let you have a shot in the dark. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, thanks for all the jokes you send me, by the way, too. They're hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, <all right>. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, Paul, is I've got, I'm going to call in people for you. Okay. So I actually have a female standing here for you. Um, I don't think this is mom. Is mom or is it grandma? Who's in spirit for you? Uh, both of them, all of them. Mom oh. and old grandmoms, you know. Oh, okay. This is yeah. your grandmother coming through, though, very strongly. She's kind of pushed your mom out of the way. Was your grandmother quite bossy? <laughs> uh, her mother may, may have been, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Or it could have been my, my dad's uh, grandmother, you know, my dad's mother, but probably my mom's mother. Dad's side. No, this is mom's side. Did you not know her? Yeah, I did. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, but she was a bit feisty, though, wasn't she? Uh, I thought she was. She was never with us. I never witnessed anything like that, you know. But she, she was a, a mother of like five boys, and they were all minors in in England, you know. So they were all tough lads, you know. Oh well, there you go. All right, yeah. that's confirmation enough. Yeah. All right. right. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm asking her to tell me your past life. That is most relevant that you need to know today. Okay, so this is very typical of a past life. So most of our past lives revolved around water as human beings. Well, even as animals, you know, we all have to have water to live. And this is very, very typical. We often live near streams and lakes and rivers and and uh, oceans and things like that because we had to survive we needed easy access to water so i'm looking at you and also don't forget in the water there's a food source as well food supply so this is nothing really unusual but i see you trying to grab some fish out of the water this is what you're doing you're fishing which is a very common thing that we all used to do you used to have different methods. You would always try uh, different methods and you're like spearing the fish. You're, you're making your own spears. I can see you trying to sharpen sticks and how you're sharpening the stick is you're rubbing it on some sort of friction, uh, almost like another piece of wood or some rocks or I can see you trying to sharpen the spear. And as you're stabbing the fish, Paul, when you <laughs> sorry to laugh but when you bring the fish out of water it's like the teeniest tiniest little fish you could possibly imagine 
And yeah, you're like, cool. how am I supposed to feed my family with this, right? Uh, and, and you're spending all day trying to, to do this fish. Now, this is going back like several hundred years. I mean, maybe even a thousand years. Um, yeah. Soul goes way back. And where is this? I don't even feel this is in the UK. I feel this is more around the Scandinavia area, Scandinavia, and possibly like Finland, um, maybe even like Norway, Sweden, somewhere yeah. around there. But um, you are, you're just so disappointed. And as you keep fishing, like now you're trying to find other methods. Now you're trying to catch by hand and you're trying to, 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 you know, you're trying to catch the big fish, but you just can't seem to do it. And you just keep coming back with these small fish. And when you take the catch back home, like you'll have like several small fish, but by the time you debone them and you, you cook them and you clean and, and, and everything, you know, your family's starving. Okay. So what does this mean? So when I'm looking at you in that past life, there's like this big disappointment in yourself. It's like, surely I can do better than this, but I just don't know how. I'm trying my best. And yet everything I do seems to disappoint everyone. Do you understand that? Because I feel like that's relevant in this lifetime too. Do you get it? A little bit, yeah. Sometimes, you know, sometimes okay. it's terrific and sometimes it's, you know. So it just feels like it's never enough, right? Even though it's your best, it just feels never enough. And it's like, what can I do to make this better? And you keep trying to come up with lots of different ways of making things better. And it just doesn't seem to be working, right? And you've actually, in that past life, you tried to kill like other animals, hunt other animals and larger animals, but it was just too it was too hectic. Like it was just, you couldn't do it to hunt like massive animals like rhinos or hippos or big animals like that. You need a team of people and you yeah. don't have a team of people. This is just you and your wife and your children and everybody's hungry. And it's just, it, it's, it's really hard on you. And you are, you feel very responsible for the fact that you're supposed to be this hunter gatherer and you're not able to feed them efficiently or as, as much as you would like. So I feel in this lifetime, when I'm connecting the dots here, what I'm getting is in this lifetime, it's, it's still the same struggle, right? It's like, how do I, how do I create more when I don't have enough time and I don't have enough resources and what am I doing wrong? Do you do you understand that? Yeah, can, there is a correlation there. There is, yeah, there is a link. Yeah. So now we have to find out, like, why? Why is this such a struggle with you? And and so I'm looking back into the past life. Why would the soul? And I'm looking at the soul level. Why would the soul agree or? design the lifetime in this way so that you only ever just have enough and it really what the soul is telling me is it really it's it's a motivating force for you it keeps you driven it keeps you hungry but more so in that contract it's for your kids because your kids are seeing this and I feel your kids are like, you know what? I see my dad working so hard. And this is what I feel the contract is about. I want to work not as hard as he is, but I want to make a lot of money. So, so you may not realize how you're impacting your children, right? But this is what you're doing. They're seeing you. They look up to you. They love you very much. But in the soul contract, the reason that the lifetime is designed like this is really to motivate your children. I don't, I'm not sure if you you knew that. Did you know that? Uh, no, I'm not, not saying that, that I knew that, but yeah, yeah I, I can see that 
you know, there is an example being seen and my kids see, you know, when I used to travel a lot around the world working and stuff, they, they knew there was sacrifice, you know, mm. Mm. you know, in this lifetime. Are you still traveling now? Uh, just in Dublin, I'm just going down to Dublin, which is pretty close. I do sort of do a, a week on, week off down there sort of stuff. But I'm not going to the Middle East anymore or any other far places, far east or anything like that. No. To work, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I don't feel that you will be traveling much anymore, okay? You may have little jobs here and there. But I don't think you're going to have any long-term postings abroad anymore. I feel like that's done for you. Yeah, I don't I'm, know why. I'm, I just feel yeah. like it is finished. Yeah, I'm sick of it. I, I did it for 25 plus years, you know, uh, traveling, up, you know, always flying about somewhere, you know, and away from home. You know, I've seen enough of it. We're work. I don't mind traveling for holiday like most people, <laughs> you know. <laughs> traveling for holidays is good, but traveling away from home is not good, you know, great, if you know. It's a novelty worse then after a while. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how long I'll be down in this position, down in Dublin for this particular line. You know, it, it seems okay. It's, I'm not really head over heels about it, but we'll see. Maybe I'll jump to another airline or whatever, you know, maybe closer to home or we'll, we'll see. I'll just let it run its course. I think you're going to be there for a while. And I think they're going to renew. Are they going to renew? I think they'll renew the contract, by the way. So that's good news. But I just yeah. want you to know that this struggle is not for, you know, nothing. It's actually the contract. The big message to me is, you know, we don't want to struggle like our dad. So therefore, we it's motivating for them. Um, how well, old are your kids? 14, 11. I think he mentioned yeah, there you go. both of them are going to do very well, you know. They are. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, can I? I mean, you've got a list there of other people and girls and guys. It was this, and so I won't waste most of your time. Just a quick one, Liz. How many soul life or human lives do you reckon I've had? Uh, how many human lives have you had? Ooh, you've had quite a few. Give me that number again. You're up there. You're probably around 400. So you're pretty um, up there. Yeah. 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 Human law. Oh, let me ask human law. Yeah. It's about 400. So you've had, you've had a lot, but I do feel that your human lives have been spaced out quite a lot. You like to have large gaps in between. So yeah. where some people, they want to come back down within like 50 years, a hundred years for you, you seem to have like two, three hundred year gaps. Yeah, that would be me. Have a have a lie in. Have a read. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks. You ready for the next one? All right, Ronan. Thank you. All right, Liz. Thank you. You can go thank on you, the other. All right, thank Nitish, you. you're up. Go ahead. Hello. Nitish. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, it's midnight. Well, it's way past midnight, but yeah. I know. It's I'm glad you took our call. For you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So but I was still wide awake for this, though. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Is it cold there? Uh, you know what? I thought the temperature has been actually been um, getting quite hot recently. Right now, in the room I am, it's quite actually boiling. <gasps> you know, yeah. that's because I'm not bloody there. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Listen, I was freezing when I was over. I had no oh, winter yeah. coat on. I, I mean the brawly. I mean, there was no even point. There was no point having the umbrella mm. open because the gale force winds just blew it out of my hand. I was like, okay, I'm yeah. just going back inside. There's no point. All right. Yeah. So, are there any patterns right now that you identify that you want me to take a look at? Um, I have a few things to pinpoint, but I think I'd just let you start first. Okay. Potluck. All right. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about my cough. I'm still trying to get over all the body spray and the perfumes and the fragrances and the plugins and the, oh my God. Okay. Um, seriously, I said in the CTT yeah. group the other day, if anybody wants to kill Liz, right, just take a really strong bottle of perfume and spray it in my face. Um, okay. So let me pull in your grandmothers here. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, and she is, she's going to show me, I'm saying, can you show me, can you show me a past life for Natish that is most relevant for today? Oh, okay. Speaking of fish, here we go. Very, very typical again of a past life. We had many, many past life, past lives as birds and insects and fish and and uh, you know animals, lots of reptile lifetimes. And what I'm getting for you is this fish. Okay, so you're flopping around. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you flopping around so much? And and I can see that somebody's holding you by your mouth, right? So you've obviously been called. So here we go. This is how simplistic the lifetimes were. This is how our lives were. None of this like going to work and trying to pay bills and all this rubbish that we do now. We really just got up, <coughs> forage for food, fed our families, uh, took care of our homes and we went to sleep, right? That's that's the basic, that's that's how we lived. And And you're like, let me go, let me go. And I'm seeing you and you're really trying to like wriggle your way away from this this person, this really primitive, like tribal person, this is going way, way back. I feel like this is somewhere in Africa. This is like Northern Africa area, sort of maybe even Arabic area. And, um, and but this is so tribal and you just couldn't get away. Okay. So yeah. what does that mean? Let me have a look. What does that mean, Grandma? What does that mean in this lifetime? Okay, got it. So in this lifetime, you're trying to get away, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. Okay. And no matter how hard you're trying to get your freedom, it just, you can't seem to break free. It's either yeah. one thing or another that's blocking you, blocking you, blocking you. And one minute you think you've got your freedom and you're going to make an escape and then something happens and it holds you back. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. So we got to ask why, why is that holding you back? Okay, it's the fear of leaving. So even though with your conscious mind, Natish, right? Yep. You are trying to break away and, and be confident and leave. There's this huge fear going on in the subconscious and in the soul that it is so terrified to leave. And that's why what all these circumstances, it's almost like a self-sabotage in a way. Do you understand that? yeah yeah okay i don't know if you wish to share an example with us uh yeah so well so recently i've basically been trying to make a lot of positive changes to my life so i've been i've been working on my health i've been been trying to put in like new routines and activities to improve my sort of spiritual and uh, physical health um i sort of i get into a routine i sort of do all the um exercise and stuff like that or just my practices i build them up for a few days maybe months and then all of a sudden it's like my body can't handle it. It's like my body just gives up and it sort of reverts back to like my normal stays. Hmm. And even just um, even just like if even if I'm like just like let's say I'm eating eating healthy and stuff like that, my body just can't hand, handle the sort of new energy that I'm building up. It just sort of tries to destroy itself. It just like sabotages itself without even like without me being in control. So when you say your body gives out, what do you mean? Like you get to exhaustion? Yeah, so it's like it sort of just starts um, getting, I sort of start getting sort of unable to like handle all the, like the new energy, like unable to handle like um sort of feeling good and stuff like that. So like I'm unable to handle the changes. Okay. You know why that is, right? That makes absolute 100% sense to me because what happens is we're so used to operating in a certain vibration in a certain way right so when we're trying to make drastic drastic changes 
it's almost like you end up in a fight with the body. Okay. Cause yeah. the body's used to functioning in a particular way. And this is exactly what's going on with you because of this fear that's going on in the soul and the subconscious, right? It's yeah. pulling you back, pulling you back, pulling you back, yeah. pulling you back. Right. Yeah. So how is Natish going to be able to let that go? I know, you know, CTT and you're quite good at it, right? Yeah. I think yeah. you need to be able to do some tapping and do, you know, there's a part of me that knows how to easily and joyfully manifest, <coughs> excuse me, the optimum ability to keep moving forward, even on my bad days, that part of my being is willing to inform the rest of me now. It, that's what it is. You're in this push pull fight and you're trying to get your freedom with the conscious mind, but the body and the subconscious and the soul just can't keep up right now. Um, yeah. You may need to slow it down just a little bit and, re, you know, just make sure you're adjusting properly. Um, but you'll get there in the end. And when you have your freedom, I want you to know you will never look back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a time scale roughly? Or is it just keep going forward? Um, what's the time scale? I feel like it's going to take you a good two years to be comfortable. I do. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. You know, people are like, two years. Oh, my God. Hello. Do you know how fast two years flies by? I'm like, what yeah. year are we in? 2024 already? Really? Um, it flies by. Okay. <clears throat> and you're going to be so busy. But just make sure you're eating well and you're working on that because that's going to help with your vibration and raising your yeah. vibration and pulling you forward. Okay. Yeah. You will it's get just, your freedom. Yeah. You will. Yeah. It's just with raising the vibration, it's just like being able to handle the sort of um, higher vibrations. That's the, I think that's the main challenge. It, it is, but you know what? You're going to get there. See, whenever we're trying to change the vibration of our bodies, right? Or yeah. how we were our lifestyles, even like addicts, right? The brain wiring just dips back in to what it knows. And you're, you're essentially having to rewire. I'm not saying you're an addict because I know you're not, <laughs> right? But yeah. But it's like the rewiring and it really takes a long time to rewire. It's not a one hit wonder. It's a process. But if you keep working hard at it and you refuse to give in, okay, you will get there in the end. But just, yeah. if you know, if you can't do your, whatever it is you're doing that day, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just keep doing it the next day and every day that you can you will break free, but breaking free is very hard for you. Your soul never designs breaking free to be easy. And even as you saw in that last lifetime with the fish, she was trying to wriggle its way out of, you know, somebody's finger had a hold of you. They had a hold of your mouth and you couldn't break free. This is yeah. one of your big challenges. So you will do it. You just, it's going to take a lot of self-discovery and a lot of hard work. And it's going to take a lot of self-love and a lot of self-esteem and a lot of confidence. Yeah. But okay. if you just keep working on that, you will get there. Yeah. Thank uh, you will I be much. able to achieve it? Just lastly, will I be able to achieve it this lifetime? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Karen, you're, you're not going anywhere that's right. anytime soon. <laughs> okay, thank you. So yeah, you thank will, Natish. Thank you for staying thank you. up thank you. and joining no, us. Fine. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. All right, Ronan, who's my next victim? Go ahead, Karen. Karen T. Hi, Liz. It's Karen. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. I'm okay. I'm holding holding up. <laughs> good stuff. That's what we like to hear. Now, do you have something in particular you want to work on or find the answer to? Uh, I do, actually. I um, I have, I seem to attract people into my life that all they want to do is hurt me or take me down or steal my shine and I'm not really sure why I'm attracting all these people and what that lesson is Ooh, juicy okay um <laughs> let's see 
Is your dad in spirit? Is that who I he, have? Yeah, he's in spirit. Okay, thank you. What's his first name? Larry. Larry. Okay. He's going to show me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Larry, why is it that Karen seems to attract terrible people into her life? Okay, Karen. Here we go. I'm looking at a scene of going into a past life. This is going back thousands of years, okay? You were actually a male in that lifetime. Very, very, again, these are all very typical so far. And you are in some sort of tribal warfare. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's loud. I can hear like lots of people screaming and shouting. <clears throat> and you're trying to figure out where to throw your, your spear. You're like, okay, I got my spear here. Where am I supposed to throw this thing? Like, how do I do this? Like, how do I know who's the enemy and who isn't the enemy, right? What if I throw this spear and I throw it at someone <coughs> and I kill them and they're, they're you know, they're friend, they're not foe, okay? There's a lot of hesitation and all of that hesitation actually gets you killed. And you're like, why does this always happen to me? As you're leaving this, the uh, earth plane, <clears throat> sorry about my cough. As you're leaving the earth plane, I can see this so clearly. And it's like, I have no discernment. Now, in this lifetime, that's a, that's a troubling thing for you. You take everything at face value. You take people for their word. You're very trusting. And I feel like when you meet people in this lifetime, you're like, oh, oh okay, well, they said this and they said that. And, and you believe them right away. I don't feel like you question them. I don't feel like you do you like your normal investigation work like most, you know, lots of people should be doing. Okay. You're like, oh, well, they said they did this and they said they did that. Or even better, they said they love me or they care for me. And you immediately took that as, oh, well, they must mean it. Do you understand that? Completely. <laughs> okay. That's the problem. You're too quick to trust. And what happens is in your energy field, they're picking that up, right? And they're saying, oh, well, here comes, you know, and I hate to say this, Karen, because you know, I love you. And I mean it when I say that, but here comes a sucker, right? And, mm -hmm. and they, they know that they can fool you because you don't have that inquisitive sort of discernment, like, Hmm. Well, I'll be the judge of that. You just really take everything at face value. So that's the issue. And before you know it, <clears throat> excuse me, everything has spiraled completely out of control. The relationship has gone to pot completely. There's no way to salvage it because when these people take you down, Karen, they take you down fast and they take you down hard. Do you understand that? Completely. Okay. Don't be so trusting just because you're, you're judging everybody that they're like you, right? So you, you're mm. looking at everybody as, oh, well, you know, this is how I treat people. So everybody must be the same way. And it isn't like that at all. You have to be on your guard. So that's something that you're going to have to really work on because if you don't, you are going to keep attracting in these very destructive people. And uh, it's a real problem. I feel like this has been going on for a very long time, almost to the point where you're actually scared to meet anybody anymore. Do you understand that? Oh my God, that's so true. I'm trying to date and I'm like, oh, I just might as well just not do that. Because <laughs> it doesn't work out, right? <clears throat> well, I haven't really had the opportunity because I keep stopping myself. Mm. Mm. because you have been so highly traumatized by all of these fires <laughs> it's like somebody comes in and like sets a fire right and and you're like how do I put this fire out so going forward it is okay to put yourself out there 
but you need to do so with extreme boundaries in place. And you need to be able to get to know the person and they have to prove what they say, right? So, mm. so it really is about that. Also, this whole online thing, I don't feel like that's a good place for you to meet people. It may be like the initial meeting point, but then it has to be in-person dating. It has to be for you. You need to be able to judge their body language, their eye movements, you know, if they're fidgety, if they're this, if they're that, because they like to talk a good talk, right? And they think that you're going to be, you're going to believe it. And you can't do that anymore. You're going to have to really be suspicious and, and do not trust anyone until they prove that they are trustworthy. Does that help you? Very much. Yeah. Okay. Don't trust anyone. Okay. <laughs> You've been here before, been there, done that. It's like before you didn't even know where to throw your spear, right? Who's right. the enemy here? I've got no idea. So it's like, know your enemy. Ugh, I'm not good at that. That's a well, work in progress. To, you'll have to get, you know, you'll have to get good at that. So, um, so no worries. Okay. All right, Karen. Thank Does you. Does that help? Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. You're welcome. And I just muted myself. I'm like, why did I do that? I have no idea. All right. So the next person, because I think Mr. Reality had to walk his dog, is Cookie. Oops. Hello. There she is. You you can unmute yourself. I'm so pleased because I, I was struggling there. Hi, Cookie. How are you? Oh, I'm tired, but I'm excited to be here. <laughs> oh, good. See, we're all exciting people on a Friday night. How about that? You know, yeah, and who and needs I'm to go to the bar? <laughs> I keep listening to the people in front of me and I'm like, that applies to me. That applies to me. <laughs> you know what? We often find a lot of similarities in other people's sessions. So that's why on a Monday when I do the, the CTT group at, at every Monday morning, 9 a.m. Central, for those of you that don't know, right? Every Monday, I try to share somebody's session because A, it's usually enlightening and B, it's usually helping somebody. Um, so, Miss Cookie, what would you like to know? Is there anything in particular, any, pa uh, any pattern that you want to get rid of? Yeah, I, I have two big offenders that when I think about it is uh, struggling financially for money and uh, rejection and being alone. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, and well, intertwine a lot of the time too. So, so let's see what we get for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know which one we're gonna get, but we'll find out. Now, I have a female standing here for you. Is this mom or grandma? It could be both. Everybody's gone. So. Okay. What's your mother's first name? Joyce. Joyce. Here I am. She's she, here. I am here. I am. She's struggling. She says, uh, cookie is really struggling. Tell her I love her and I'm always with her <clears throat> and she, I'm always by her side and you're, you're having difficulty making lots of decisions. I feel like you have to like make decisions like that all the time. Now what, now what, now what do you understand that? Yeah. And they're always wrong. <laughs> I don't think you're wrong actually. I think you're making the best decisions at the time with the information that you have. You're only wrong in hindsight, but at the time of making the decision, I don't feel it's wrong. Don't beat yourself up about that. Okay, so let's see. <coughs> Mom's gonna show me. Okay, very typical. These are all very typical tonight. Um, birds. Bird lifetime. So we've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds uh, lifetimes, most of us. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, as I'm looking at you, you're scared to fly. Yeah. I feel like you were abandoned in the nest or you were abandoned too early. And you never knew how to fly. Okay. 
and you finally made it out of the nest because you're hungry and you're like, well, I guess I have to fend for myself, but I need to get down there to get my food and you don't know how to fly. Okay. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. In this lifetime, you're currently in everything you know or everything you've done, you've had to learn on your own. Do you understand that? Yeah. That's why your decision making is so difficult. And it's almost as if, and I don't know where this is coming from, Cookie, and this may be a little upsetting, and I'm sorry if it is, but I have to give it to you. Um, nobody wants me. Yeah. I just don't feel like anybody wants me. I'm not a good catch. I have nothing to offer anybody. My my situation is so diabolical. Who would want me? Do you understand that? It's true. Yeah. Okay. But that's in your energy field. And that's in your energy field from way you've been doing this so many lifetimes. It's ridiculous, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you've been doing this since your bird lifetime. And why would anybody want me? So with those feelings lurking around in the energy field, the ones that do come into your sort of biofield area or show a bit of interest, they're, they're like the ones that nobody would want. Do you understand that? Yeah, and they take advantage of me. They do. You know why they do that? Because you've got this nobody wants me going on in your energy field. Okay, that's something that you're going to have to work on because... If you swap that around and transmute it into everybody wants me, right? And mm -hmm. you are so filled with self-love, you'll start attracting the right people. But as long as you have all this negative going on in your energy field that nobody wants me, I'm just, you know, damaged goods, I'm this, I'm that, I've, you know, nobody's ever loved me. I don't even know what it feels like to be loved, then that's why you're attracting in the, the wrong people. Mm. Is it able to be? Does all of that make sense to you? Yeah. I, is it fixable? It and is what? fixable. Okay. So one way of fixing it is through the CTT. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be, so all of this stuff um, with like the past life patterns and things, that's all energy, right? That's all what's in our framework, our energy field, and it is fixable. That's why I quite like doing these patterns because oftentimes we've been trapped in these same patterns for many lifetimes, especially you, you've been doing this for thousands of years, right? Doesn't yeah. matter if you're animal, vegetable, or mineral, right? You're still doing it. Even now, you're still doing it. It's it very tangible. <laughs> And it's tiring, isn't it? It's exhausting being yeah. in the same trap over and over again. So let's ask your mom. <coughs> She's waving again. <laughs> um, how, how does Cookie transmute this? So you're going to have to work on like all of your negatives, all of your negative self-talk. If you catch yourself doing negative self-talk, that's just the surface part of it. This goes so deep for you and you're going to have to work on your self-love. So you can, anybody listening tonight, right, can do this. So there's a, and the, those of you that don't come to the CTT group and you don't understand what I'm talking about, you like really need to come to the group, right? Because it's really life-changing. Um, so you could do, there's a part of me that knows how to easily and joyfully manifest my optimum ability to love myself, right? It's that simple that part of my being is willing to inform the rest of me now. You do that three to five times a day on a consistent basis, I promise you, you're gonna start throwing out some of this negative energy, right? Processing and bringing in the good energy, okay? Mm -hmm. But you've really got to turn this around 
because yeah. this feeling of abandonment, can I just ask why you felt abandoned in this lifetime? Um, I, I just didn't feel the love from my parents that there was a difference. And then I felt my mom shut down with all the stuff. So I felt alone and I was rejected by friends in high school, grade school, college work. It's just everything. It's a repeating pattern. It is. And the reason you've designed it again in this lifetime is because you're trying to eventually learn it, right? Master the lesson and move on. You can master the lesson. This um, life? Yes, absolutely. Probably within a year. Probably if you work diligently by the end of the year. Oh, that's good. Okay. I feel like punished. I feel like I really am being punished with everything. Well, yeah, but that's, that's self-punishment. Right. Yeah. If you had those negative feelings going on in your energy field, right, mm -hmm. that is what you're going to draw in. You're not going to draw in people for your best good. Right. You're going to draw in people that see you exactly as you think of yourself. OK. OK. Does all of that make sense for you? I hope that helps you. I know that was a hard reading. I think that's a big help and it gives me a place to work towards. I felt like I couldn't work on anything. So that's good. Excellent. Wonderful news. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thanks cooks. Thank you. <laughs> See you Monday. See, See you Monday. <laughs> See you Monday. Thank you so much. All right. My next victim is none other than Hilda. <laughs> and I know you have some questions about the CTT. Uh, there oh, yeah. you are. Hi, Hilda. Hello. Good night. How are you tonight? Very good. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. Now you said you, you messaged me or you messaged me on the Patreon. How, what was it? You're having some trouble with the CTT. Well, right now, the last CTT we do was about not getting negative negative um, karmic consequences. Yeah, so it's about empowering ourselves without attracting negative consequences, karmic consequences. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was a big session. That not working for me. It is working or it's not working? Not working for me is going wrong everything. Okay, tell me why. Well, I begin to do, do the CTT with the this part, new, new part, and the three days that I've been doing is going wrong very hard the day to work. Is it that you feel bad or is it that what what can you describe to me like exactly what's going on? Is it that you feel out of alignment? Is it that you don't feel well? Is it that what what's going on there? It's going wrong in the work and the day of work is going wrong. The the trips are too long, but paid. And this thing don't happen before. I don't know what happened. Ah, so things at work are going bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you could be transitioning, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes things go sort of bad to, you know, be a catalyst in order to go to something better. And mm -hmm. so let's have a look. <clears throat> Let me ask why. Why is this? Is it your dad that's in spirit? Yes, yes. Okay, what's your dad's first name? Angel. Okay, what is going on? It's time to move on, okay? I don't feel that they treat you well anyway. I feel that it's more noticeable now. Do you understand that? Well... Yes, I know. Move on to what? Move on to what? I just feel like there's a, there's other things out there for you to be doing 
that are not so hard on your body. Whatever it is you do, it's hard work. What is it you do? Oh, I do deliveries with the dash. Ah, so it, it's so d with the DoorDash. Yes. Oh, so they have that down in Puerto Rico. Excellent. At least I know yes. that. Whenever I go down there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, and if you you could turn up at my door, I just feel it's time to move forward into something else. I, I don't know like, what. what. I love my job. Another job. I just feel that this is just becoming burnout. And you know, Elsa, as the economy, this is coming in from your dad, right? As the uh -huh. economy is not really recovering, it's becoming yeah. harder and harder to make money, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what's what he's telling me is um, until this economic slump is over, it's going to be like this. So he feels, and this is his personal thoughts, feelings, and opinion, but he's mm -hmm. telling me that it's time for a change. So if you could find something else, um, by all means, then do so and do something that will make you happier. I feel like you're tired of this. Well, not so much. I love my job. I don't know what else to do. You don't know what else to do. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a look and see what's going on with these past life patterns. Yes, I know please. You've done a lot of work with the CTT and it usually works very well for you. If, yeah. if you're not comfortable using the phrases, the added phrases without negative karmic consequences, then by all means, swap back to what you were doing. If you feel better doing that, Yes. Okay. So let's have a look here. Ooh. Okay. I see something wriggling. I'm like, what is this thing wriggling? Okay. You're some sort of, I'm like, are you like a centipede or a roly poly or something? You're some sort of <laughs> insect. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And you're like hiding underneath the, you're hiding under the grass. I'm like, why, why aren't you coming out? You're like, oh, no, I'm not coming out unless it's safe to come out. I am not coming out. Uh, I don't feel that. It's okay. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, you actually know. spend most of your life in hiding in that yes. lifetime. In this too. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Really? Yes. And it's about... It's about pushing, pushing your boundaries and actually trying to find something that is beyond your comfort zone. And you would be very good at it. But there's so much like hesitation there. Like I can't get you to come out from the grass. I'm trying to get you out. I'm trying to coax you out of the grass. And I'm saying, come talk to me. And you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're so funny. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have an idea. Okay. Try to just move forward. And you don't have to quit your job, obviously. But try to find something that maybe you would like that gets you out of your comfort zone, but you're still making some money. And maybe it's something you can do in addition to what you're doing now, but whatever it is, you're, you know, this thing that you're doing now, you can't keep mm -hmm. doing this forever. This is not a forever job. I don't feel mm -hmm. you took this as a forever job. This was just something that you did to make money and it's turned yeah. into something permanent. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hilda, you got to go outside of your comfort zone. I'm going to try. So what are you going to do? There's a part of me that knows how to easily and joyfully come out of the grass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I would Funny. cry. So yeah, you've got to, because this thing you're doing is not going to last forever. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. All right. 
All right, Helda, thank you so much. And I'll see you Monday. That's another CTT yeah, warrior, you Monday. everybody. Helda, nice. Happy Mother's Day. Very good. Guys. Oh, the reality, you're back. Cookie, go ahead. Hi. No, yes. Cookie's already gone. Oh, it's, the, the, the walk went well. Who's next? <laughs> it's uh, Janet. Janet or Jenna? Uh, Janet. You. Hi, Liz. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Okay. I'm excited. I've never had this done before. Uh-oh. Woo. We got a newbie. All right. <laughs> is there anything in your life, Janet, that is a pattern that you see and you don't understand it? The only issue I've ever had is with my voice, with my vocal cords. Mm -hmm. I have since my late teens, well, actually through high school, I've always had like a deep raspy voice. And then when okay, I was- Okay, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing, but it's then- It's hot, it's hot. Trust <laughs> me, everybody listening out here, they're gonna say, wow, that's so hot. I know, well, my, my volleyball coach is always like, it's Janet with the sexy voice. But then at 19, I lost my voice for a year and I had like laryngitis for a year and it just went on and on. I can speak no more than a whisper. And I ended up having, uh, going and having, finding out I had nodules on my vocal cords. And so I had surgery to move those. And then I struggled to get, cause once you had surgery, you had scar tissue that built up. So I really struggled to talk after the surgery. Um, and I, I've had like three or I want to say three surgeries, maybe four. I can't even remember, but still to this day, I still struggle some days more so than others. Some days my voice is strong. Some days it's very weak and raspy. So I don't know. I always tell my husband, I was like, I think my throat was slit or slashed in a past life. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm having these issues, you know? So let's take a really look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, I got a man standing here for you. Is this dad or granddad? Um, my dad's still alive, so I guess it would be my grandfather. I okay, both grandfather on your mom's side. Okay. What's his first name? Uh, Bill. Bill. Hello. That's him. Okay. He was very, um, very much a gentleman, wasn't he? I see him. He's very, um, how can I describe him? He's very concise in his movements. He's very, like he moves a certain way. I can't describe it. What is the word I'm looking for? It'll come to me. But he's very sort of um, precise in his movements, like his hand movements and his gestures. Th does that sound like him? I mean, I've only, he died kind of early. So I was very, very young when he died. I was probably in grade school. Um, I've only met him with white hair and um, chewing tobacco. He liked to chew tobacco. But his hand movements are very eloquent. Like very, um, I, I can, that's the only way I can describe it. Even though he chewed tobacco, that was just like because it was trendy. I feel like he portrays himself as very much a a a, a gentleman. Hmm. All right. I'm asking him to show me. What is it that we can find out about Janet's voice? Oh Jesus. Okay. Immediately as I tune into your past life, I see someone stabbing you with a spear from the top of your head all the way down through your neck and through your body. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Very traumatic. This is going back thousands of years. I'm like, what in the hell is this? Right? Because even when I see stuff like that, sometimes it's like immediate and it's shocking. Um, what is this? Why did Janet get stabbed like to me through the skull? Like, and, and how much force did that like tribal warrior type person stab her? I mean, you have to be pretty, you know, strong to, to, to spear someone through the skull all the way down 
through the neck. That's how they killed people back in the day. I feel like this is tribal warfare. These two tribes have been rowing, rowing and rowing and arguing for, for centuries. They hate one another. And they're always trying to depopulate the other tribe. And it's always like some sneak attack, right? And each <coughs> tribe has an MO of how they kill. And this is how the other tribe killed you. That's not very nice. <laughs> no. Listen, back then, like we, you know what? We have it pretty darn easy. Um, We don't think that we do, but we do. So... What is this about? So as your soul is leaving the earth plane, you're like, what have I done? I didn't see this coming. What have I done to deserve this? I was just like this sweet and you're female, this sweet female in this lifetime. I didn't really talk to anyone. I didn't really make myself known too much. I just kept my head down. I did my role in the tribe. And actually what you did in the tribe is you would beat the um, the food. So, you know, sort of like a mess, a pestle and mortar. You know what I mean? So you right. had a large thing like that. And that's all you did. You really didn't want any trouble. You were non-confrontational and you were just doing that all day long. And this other tribe snuck up upon you and they wanted to kill the women. And the reason they wanted to kill the women was because they wanted to depopulate the tribe. Well, how do you depopulate the tribe? You get rid of the women, right? <coughs> Excuse me. You also had children in that lifetime. Those children ended up being captured and taken over to the other tribe and raised as if they were their children. So what is the message here? This is about this past life trauma of you being speared in this way. You design your lifetime to always hide yourself. Like, I feel like you don't want to come to notice. And by coming to notice would be having a voice, right? And you really have designed your lifetimes because you believe in that soul memory from that experience that you have to keep quiet in order to live longer, right? And the longer you are on the earth plane, the more soul, you know, boxes we can tick. You know, we have to have all these things that we, we have to do here on the earth plane. And the longer we're here, the more we can process. I mean, as long as we don't get caught up in these druggy traps and alcoholic traps and all these other traps, right? <coughs> but I don't feel that's you. And you can take all these boxes. So you basically design your lifetime where you don't have a voice. Okay. So, Ken, Janet, is this repairable? Is this repairable? I'm getting a no on that. I think you've gone as much as you can. You will have to keep having more surgeries. But this is why your soul has designed it. It is deep rooted in this past life trauma. Um, there will be moments when you do get a bit more voice than what you have now. I, listen, I think it's great. But I know your biggest concern is like losing your voice completely. I just want you to know that's not going to happen again. Okay. Okay. So, so you when don't you have to worry about that. Okay. Because I mean... There's times when it's stronger, days when it's weaker, it's, you know, allergies affect it, you know, sometimes different things that I eat might affect it. Um, but you said I had thousands of lives. So how far back do you think that goes? So that spearing lifetime goes back at least 5,000 years, if not longer, maybe even 10. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it goes back way back, way, way back. And you learned a valuable lesson, which is I'm going to keep myself quiet because I know from that experience that I will be taken off the earth plane. So I need to stay here as long as possible. Yeah, that's going way, way back. Okay. Uh, is dairy irritated? No, but I feel like uh, grains irritated. Anything that causes inflammation 
really takes a toll on your voice. So you may need to 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 pipe down the uh, the uh, uh, tone it down on the inflama inflammatory foods. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I cleaned hey, up my actually, sorry. I, I've cleaned up my diet and eliminated grains and processed foods and sugars. And since then, it's gotten a lot better. So you're right. I think something inflammatory food-wise was irritating my throat as well. It really does. Okay. So you may need to even strip it down and go on the allergen diet. You know, the allergen diet is where you cut out everything and you cut out to like one or two different types of foods. And then you, um, from there you start reintroducing, but you, you keep a diary of how your body responds to the reintroduction. But I definitely feel like grains like uh, oats, wheat, uh, obviously gluten, um, anything kind of husk uh, like as well uh, causes inflammation, any bread products, any sort of sugary products. Um, I feel like you're, you're okay with carbohydrates, but you want to keep those carbohydrates to like fruit and you want to just kind of actually... The more you can eat raw food is best. Now, am I talking about raw chicken? No, but the, the you know, try the raw food diet. Have you ever tried that? Um, <clears throat> no, but I'm kind of keto carnivore right now. So, um, like I said, it's kind of improved since okay. I've gone that route. So, yeah. but I, so I cook, I steam vegetables. I'll eat steamed vegetables, but I'll try raw. So you don't, with raw food, and, and you'll need to check this, I think it's something like you don't want to heat your food up more than 110 degrees because the more you heat the food up, the more nutrients, you know, cooking changes the chemistry in food, right? So, so you lose more, the, nutrients. the hotter your food is, not talking about meat, but the hotter your food is, because obviously you have to cook your meat. Uh, but right. the hotter the food is, it, it changes the chemistry and it, it ruins the nutrients or, you know, sometimes foods that <clears throat> like carrots, you know, when you cook carrots, carrots become sugary. So right. I would try to go with a raw food diet and do an elimination diet. I don't feel like this carnivore diet, it should be long term. I don't know why that's coming through very strongly, but you're going to have to change it up at some point. And when you do, that's what you're going to have to change to. Okay. So there you go, Janet. Well, welcome. Anyway, oh, thank you, Janet. Call the C2T Thanks, every Monday morning, 9 a.m. Central, if you want to join us. Yes, I'll be there. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Um, next is uh, Jenna. Hi, Liz. Hey, Jenna. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you. Is there anything in particular that you want to work on? Well, I'm thinking maybe you should tell me about my most interesting past lives because you're talking about how many of the past lives are repeating themselves. Mm. Most Which interesting. Is interesting or noteworthy, let's say. I don't know interesting or noteworthy so i'm definitely picking up around the uk area i don't feel like this is going back too far this is only going back about three or four hundred years and your family owned a business i feel like this is around the northern england area like yorkshire no it's not derbyshire is it cheshire possibly cheshire area um, and I feel like your father was head of this business and you know what? He had all girls. <laughs> oh my God. My father had all girls in this life and I have all girls. Okay. <laughs> it's all girls, baby. It's all girls all the time. Okay. And in that lifetime, he was a cobbler. He was a shoe cobbler. And back then, women could not really work, right? So it was not seen as that women could be cobblers, even though you were all 
very, very good at being able to do the trade. He had no one to pass his business along to. Mm. And he started getting um, he started getting ill. And he started worrying about who am I going to pass my business to? And he he was panicking to the point that he's still working and he was sick. And <clears throat> you know, the society or the community as a whole, they really frowned upon women doing that type of work, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. You, I don't know if you're the oldest in this lifetime, but I feel, I don't even feel like you were the oldest in that lifetime, but you were definitely the strongest sibling. Are you the um, strongest si sibling in this lifetime emotionally? I would say I'm the weakest. I was emotionally and mentally abused by the others. Okay. They called me the R word, but I was autistic. Oh. But it was the 70s, you know. Oh, okay. Um, and now we're estranged because I'm too much. So that is, what, is what they say. It's role reversal. So back wow. in that lifetime, right, you were the strongest sibling. I can't and imagine. You, you actually pretended to be a man. <laughs> Oh my God, I knew you were going to say that about five minutes ago. I was going to say, is this a Yentl situation? <laughs> yeah. And you were the long lost cousin I that rode that. in from out of town that took over the business so you could feed the family and you kept the business going. <clears throat> and not only, interesting. not only did you keep the business going, but you had to forego having your own family right? In order mm -hmm. to see the others. Wow. Mm -hmm. And now in this lifetime, you've gone the opposite. You're saying that you're the weakest and they gave mm -hmm. up on you. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a complete yeah. role reversal. <laughs> I would have liked to have remembered that other one at least. <laughs> but I don't doubt it. Do. Your souls do. Now, as I look into your soul, I'm saying why the reversal in this lifetime and the reversal is you wanted to try something different you were tired of being the leader of the family you wanted a challenge being a leader of the family was quite easy for you but you wanted a, a challenge in this lifetime and you wanted to feel what it was like on the other side of not being the leader of the family so so that's what's happening in this lifetime now as for your um family, your relationships being repaired with your siblings, I don't think it's going to be repaired. No, you've told me on three other occasions it will never be repaired. Did and I... you told me why bother. Yes, we've talked many times. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't remember that. Okay. No, it's okay. We had a mix up at Christmas. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. That's me. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I remember now. That's me, okay. love. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, I'll so, take what I can get, and I'm grateful. Thank you. Oh, you're so nice. So, oh, Liz, can I ask you one more question? Yeah, My life don't is worry it. about... Sorry, let me give this to you. Okay. Don't even think twice about this relationship issue with your siblings, okay? It's not even relevant. It's not even... This is just you experiencing the other side. That's all you need to know in this lifetime. When you all reunite back up there, it'll be, yeah, good job. Well, yeah, you did it. Whose turn is it next time? Okay. I want you not to- Not mine again. <laughs> yeah, not yours. Yeah. Not mine again. Hey, just real quick. My life is in flux in so many different uh, ways. That's why I didn't ask a question because it would be a drop in the bucket. But can you just tell me, give me a clue where I'm moving. I'm packing up my house. I don't know where I'm moving yet. If you could give me a clue, I could start looking. <laughs> no, we've been looking. Oh, my goodness. Is it? I don't feel it. How far are you willing to go? Because I don't think it's going to be too far. That would be fantastic. Because right now, everything we're looking at is too far for me. Okay. How far is far? I'm in Vancouver and my husband's looking in Minnesota. Don't you know? 
it's cold there. What do you want to go there for? I don't know what he wants to go there for. He's looked at many different things and he says that we could do well. And we're both in declining health. So he thinks that that's where we can keep the family afloat. You don't want to go to Minnesota. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to do well, what? In eight feet of snow? I mean, no. Oh God. Okay. Well, he works remotely and I'm retired. So. Oh, okay. Are they leaving? I don't, are they leaving? I don't feel like you're leaving Canada. Um, Not Canada. Vancouver. 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 Washington. Washington. Okay. Yeah. Well, no wonder. Okay. Are they leaving Vancouver, Washington? Are you leaving? I don't feel like you're leaving Washington. You're not leaving that area. I don't feel fantastic. you are going to go too far. I just don't feel it. That would be fantastic because I have the best friends of my life here now. Since I met you, coincidentally, and CTT. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Good. That's I might add. <laughs> that's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. I don't feel like you're going to go too far. I just don't. You're not willing to. I feel like you're going to dig your heels in and say, no, hell no, we won't go. Yeah, you're not going. All right. That's what that's been. That's been the popular opinion among my friends. <laughs> oh, that's good. Awesome. All right, I, my love. I keep, well, I keep asking them if they want me to get a divorce or what. That would never happen. But thank you, Liz. Thank you so much for doing this for everybody. Thank I you. love you. Never get a divorce, by the way. Never. No, I know. It's me and him, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're like me. It's already too much. Too many years have gone by. There's no point now. You might as well finish it all now. That's uh, right. It's comfortable. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks, Jenna. Thank uh, you. I love you. Um, bye bye. You too. Michelle is the next one, Ronan. Please. Jen, if you can mute. Michelle, you can unmute. Go ahead. Going once. Going twice. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, there she is. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Is there anything that you would like to know or your, you know, your pattern, a pattern that you're not happy with? Definitely. I am a diabolical procrastinator. Oh, God. (laughs) It's awful. And there's no reason for it sometimes. It's crazy. Oh, okay. Let's look and see what we have for Michelle. Okay, I've got a female standing here. Is this mom or grandma? Probably mama. What's her first name? Nora. Yeah, hi. Oh, I love her. I want you to know how much I love you, how much I miss you. I always want to talk to you. You talk to me all the time. I try to answer you back, but you don't hear me. Do you understand that? Oh, I do, yes. Okay. Who's the smoker? Both of us. Oh, God. She's smoking. <laughs> I'm surprised. Her last trip to the hospital, she tried to smoke a cigarette. Oh, Get lung cancer. God. That's so crazy. Okay. All right. Uh, Michelle, let's see. Why is Michelle a procrastinator? Okay. I'm going to go into the past life. Oh, my God. You're a little cricket. <laughs> <laughs> And you're just the happiest little cricket and you're just there like rubbing your little back legs together, just chirping away, chirp, 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 chirp. And nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Where is everybody? I'm just here and I come out here every night and I'm just chirping away and yet nobody responds. I feel like I'm alone in this world. Nobody understands me. Nobody gets me. Do you understand that, Michelle? Oh, I sure do. Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't matter how hard I try, nothing seems to work and it doesn't matter anyway, so I'm just not going to bother. Do you understand that? I do. There you go. That's why you have this procrastination problem. Okay, so how are we going to fix this? (coughs) First of all, you need to be heard. That's a big problem. Nobody 
talks about things I'm talking about in person. Nobody talks about things that you're interested in. You don't gel with these people. Who are these people? Oh, yes. I'm definitely a fish out of water most of the time. Yeah. And it's really hard for you to uh, find sort of uh, alignment with people. Yeah. That's really difficult. Yeah, I'm a bit of a hermit. And you've sort of, you've just kind of lost the will. Like, it's just well, this world isn't for me and this life isn't for me and I don't have anything that is for me. So I'm just, I'm done. Do you understand that? I, I really do. Unfortunately, yeah, I do. Do you come to our CTT? I haven't. I never have before, but I should. Okay. At uh, least I can do the recordings because I work, so. Yeah, yeah. you need to do the recordings, right? So yeah. for those of you that aren't, able to come every Monday, 9 a.m. Central, you need to do the recordings, right? They're there. They're at your disposal. You can do them as many times as possible. But you've got to tap out this, I've just lost the will because this world is not meant for me. I don't fit here. I don't feel as if I belong here. This is like an alien environment to me. I just, I'm done. You've got to change that. You're right, I do. If That's I'm going to finish this out, I do. So, you, but because the only, look, look how long you've been doing this stuff. See how long we've all been doing these awful patterns? You've been doing this since like uh, millions of years ago when you were a cricket. Hello, like chirp, chirp, seriously. <laughs> right? Yeah. You've never felt as if you fit in. I do think that you could find a group of people that you would fit into quite nicely, even if it's online, right? But you right. Don't find that that where you fit in. But I just don't even feel like you make the effort anymore. There's a bit of depression going on there, Michelle. Yeah, there is. Okay. There is. There's a part of me that knows how to easily and joyfully manifest the optimum group of people that I am aligned to. <clears throat> and that I can converse with and I can share with, you know, because talking, which I do a lot of, but talking <laughs> is processing, right? Especially for women. Well, even for men as well, but men don't seem to do it as much as women do. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be discriminatory and miss out and be stereotypical and like uh, offend people if you're like this, that and the other. Uh, you know, people can be who they want to be, but I just know that women just find a lot of therapy. It's therapy talking to people. It doesn't matter who you are, actually, but more so women than men. And you've really got to get that therapy. You've got to have that, uh, you know, morale boost with like minded people. And that's what's going to help bring you out of it. So I think you're going to have to start trying to find a group that, and you know, guys, I've tried. You guys don't give up on forming your own little CTT groups as well, right? You need to like be in the Discord or be on the Patreon or whatever or on a Monday, swapping email addresses and all that and doing a, you know, buddy up with somebody, pair up with someone. There's a part of me that knows how to pair up with somebody, right? Yeah, so, sure. I'm on your Patreon. Right. So that's your issue. And that's why you feel depressed. Gotcha. Thank you, Michelle. Well, you thank you. I appreciate you. I bet you know that song, Michelle, my bell, right? Oh, yeah. I've had many a boss sing that to me. So I'll give you a little, uh, I'll give you a little something. Let's see. Uh, hold on. There you go. All right, There's Michelle. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great one. You too. All right, we're getting close to the end. I knew this would happen. I knew we would not get to everybody and I'm starting to get a little tired now. Um, Paul P. Paul P is next. Mr. Reality. Paul, you're up. <laughs> you seem like you're asleep, mate. I've lost my power, so go ahead. I don't see Paul M. Paul, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. Go ahead. 
awesome. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Oh, good. Thank you. Where's that accent from? From the UK. Ah. It's not as not as strong as it used to be, but it's a little bit there still. <laughs> oh, right. Where are you now? I'm in Canada. Oh, my God. Where are you from in the UK? From, uh, I'm a Brummy, they, they tell me. <laughs> oh, at Birmingham, right? Yeah, my dad's from Birmingham, you know. I used to live in Birmingham. <laughs> King's Heath. Big up to the King's Heath master. Where are you from in Birmingham? Um, It's a uh, place called Hansworth, which is... Uh, Hansworth, I know Hansworth. Hello. Yes, it's not far. It's not far from King's Heath. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's uh, just on the other side of town, I think, King's Heath. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. How can... You don't sound brummy at all, you know. Oh, no. I lost my brummy accent. I lost it a long time ago. <laughs> On a Friday? Yeah. On a Friday, yeah. They <laughs> These people are going to be like, what are they talking about? Um, you know the funny thing about a Brummie accent is if you go to London, you have to change it if you want to do anything in business, else they just laugh at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> need some but you, you have your name as like Lickle, right? Yeah, that's the name I use on uh, Discord, Little P, because I, cha- I, I came through with my full name and then I changed it uh, ah. halfway through this, uh, Zoom. So, But Little P is what I use on Discord. Yeah, Little is like, but that's like West Indian. That's right. That's my, that's my, um, my, my heritage. My parents are from uh, Jamaica. Oh, my so, God. We have too much in common. I used to live in Jamaica, too. All right, yeah. Where in Jamaica? Where in Jamaica? Um, my my mom's from a parish called Clarendon, and my um, my my dad's from Trelawney. Oh, yeah, I know Trelawney. It's a very beautiful place. I used to live in Mandeville. Anyway. I think Trelawney was the most British parish in Jamaica back in the 1800s, so I heard. Trelawney. Oh, it's yeah, very for staying up late. Place. It's very, very beautiful. Wow. So, okay. All right. I got you. Um, what is the pattern in your life, Paul, that you would like to change? Or do you want me to find one for you? Uh, yeah, you can find one for me. There's nothing, I guess it's something I think I could change, but it's not something that, that bothers me. And it's funny, I was just thinking about this um, just this past week when I would be on here, but um, I find I found over my life I've I I've never really completed things to the you know like just an example I went to college uh, for two years and um, my weakest subject was math and uh, I needed a C to pass so I could get my diploma but I ended up with a D. I uh, went and begged the math teacher, please just let me pass. And uh, he he would he just said, no, 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 you're just going to have to do the course again during the summer. And it did, actually didn't end up doing it. And um, to this day, I still didn't complete that diploma. But it wasn't a problem because I've been able to get a pretty decent job and, you know, raise a family and stuff like that. But then... Yeah, um, that's always bothered you. Okay. Yeah. So, so you know, and, um, you know, just things that, I might be reading an article, for instance, and uh, I'm okay not finishing the last two paragraphs. It doesn't bother me. I just move on to something else or watching a movie, and I can just... Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. Why does he do this? <coughs> okay. Going way, 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 way back. Way back. This must be 10, 20,000 years or more. Okay. Yeah. You ran away. I'm saying you can't run away at that time because it's safety in numbers. And you're like, you know what, Liz? I'm just running, 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 running. And I'm saying, why are you running? And I feel like in that lifetime, the pressure that was put upon you, the demands that were put upon you was too much. They were all expecting you to be something that you didn't want to be. Okay. Okay. You didn't want to be this sort of leader or tribal sort of royalty 
Um, there was something going on there. And you're like, this is not me. This is not my personality. I don't like to kill people. I don't like to kill animals. That was really rare for back then. Okay. And you're like, I'm not going to do it. And so I see you, you wake up <coughs> early, 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 sort of in the middle of the night and you're running and you don't know where you're running to. You don't actually care. You just know you don't want to be there. Okay. Now the problem is, you know, unfortunately, cause it's like three, four o'clock in the morning. Okay. You get eaten, you get mauled by an animal, but it's this, I'm always running from something. Mm -hmm. Now in this lifetime, I still feel like you're running. Okay. I feel like you are running from something and a bit of it is you're running from yourself. Wow. That's amazing. That's you amazing. That? Yeah, I do. Because just to interject a little bit here, one of my favorite songs is a Bob Marley song. And it says, you're running and you're running and you're running away. You're running and you're running and you're running run away, but you can't get away from yourself. <gasps> Ooh, cold chills. Okay. And that's what you're doing. You're running away from yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is why you don't complete anything. Because if you complete something... That means you have to stay in position and you don't want to stay in position. You want to keep running. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That's you understand crazy. that? I mean, it probably makes more sense to you than it does to me. It does. It does. It's like I want to run away and move on to something else. And, wow. and you, and you, you can't stay still now. The reason your soul designs your lifetimes like that is because you don't like bloodshed. Back in the day, in these tribal lifetimes, you refuse to be involved in bloodshed. And the way that the soul has managed to avoid the bloodshed in many, many lifetimes, even to your detriment, even to your death, right, is to keep running. So this is a very unhealthy pattern that your soul has designed. In many, many lifetimes, you've got to stop the running. you got yeah. to figure out what it is that you want to do, and you have to stop the running. Mm -hmm. Could Liz, uh, just a question, could that be because anytime I, like, um, since I've um, come into your channel and stuff like that, I, I've uh, been doing meditations and stuff and, you know, just trying to dial in with my inner self, and one of the things that comes out to me is that a part of my running is that the the more I stay in tune with myself, the close, closer it brings me to source. And it's almost like I'm running from that as well. Does that make sense? Let's ask, are you running from source? No, but you're running from this setup, right? So in the CTT, right, our CTT warriors that show up every Monday, we know what this is, right? We, we, we've learned, <coughs> sorry, um, we've learned what this is. And this is like this whole system, this whole universal system, it's like a game, okay? You're running from the game. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're running. Because that's the only way your soul knows how to survive in this game, in this setup. Mm -hmm. You've got to stop the running because we're all here for ascension purposes. And, and this is why we reincarnate on the earth plane. And we're all trying to ascend so that we don't have to keep doing the reincarnation cycle. And you, your, your soul is like, if I just come down here and I run, through the entire lifetime and I don't commit to anything, then they can't catch me. They can't kill me. Right. But the mm. problem is your soul goes back up into the, 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 the spirit world and it designs it again and again and again. So <clears throat> your soul is of the mindset. 
if they can't catch me, they can't kill me, but your ascension is going nowhere. You're going to mm -hmm. have to stop and you're going to have to start working on all of this stuff you're running from, from the inside out and from the outside in. So even with your conscious mind, you're going to have to travel back and figure out why you're running and you're going to have to really figure it out with your soul as well. And it's going to have to stop because these decisions are not good for you in the lifetime because even your conscious mind in this lifetime is like, I wish I could just stop, but that's why you, you can't finish anything because finishing something means that you're a little bit more settled. Okay. And you don't want to be settled. Right. So if, if, so at the point of, of, of making that soul contract, right? Um, I'm the one. I'm. A, I'm just going from understanding through listening to your videos and stuff. So, I'm the one that's designing it uh, to come out and live it out, so that I can improve and take myself to that next level of ascension, right? So, am I? Am I improving every time I come down, or am I just going around in a in a cir circle? Because the things that I said I was going to do in that that design, I'm not accomplishing them. Right. You're not accomplishing them because you're running, right? So you're really going to have to, and you're making little progress on a soul level. Right. And you're really going to have to try and connect with the soul and really stop this running from, you know, okay. the game. It's running from the game, the game master, the game, the, you know, <clears throat> You're going to have to try and, and stop and finish things. Mm -hmm. And you try to go through those videos. If you can't come to the Monday group, try and go through the videos as much as possible. Right. That's going to help you. But even that, don't you leave halfway through those videos because you will end up in big trouble. With yeah, your... no, I've, I've okay. done all the videos and I've, I've heard you say at the beginning, if you're going right. to stop. Don't tell me you leave halfway through because that's running too. Don't do that. Make sure you go from beginning to end. That yeah. goes for everybody. <clears throat> if you're listening to those videos, right, and you're doing the tapping in the CTT, you've got to stay till close yeah. because if you leave halfway through, you're leaving all this empty space within you and dark travels faster than light. So dark will re-enter that space. And so you basically traded one set of problems for a new set of problems. So you right. must stay to the end. But that's what's going on with you. That that was very interesting. I so, liked it very much. And I appreciate your time, Liz. Just one last. So outside of being going through the videos just on my own, is there anything, is there like a place I can start or what would that what what advice would you give to me? Let's say I never had access to videos or something like that. What point what starting point could you give somebody like me to start so that I can heal or resolve this mm -hmm. type of situation? That's a good question. Uh, meditation, but you are terrible with meditation because that makes that's where you have to sit still. I just don't feel you want to sit still. So for you, it would have to be hypnotherapy. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I, you know what? I have been doing meditation and i've i've been improving uh, but i find like <laughs> i'll go two or three days and then i'll slip back and you know then i'm like oh my gosh i gotta get back again so yeah. um yeah so hypnotherapy that deep hey wow yeah that deep and that 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 would be a lot of sessions so yeah okay oh, good to know. all right all right babs <laughs> I'll take me, me trainers up and stop running. <laughs> They're going to say, what are they talking about? Oh, it's nice trainers, to speak with you. I hope you can come on a Monday. Yeah, I'm definitely going to make a, make an effort to do that. Yeah, for sure. All right, my love. Take care now. All right, thank so, you. Soon come, soon come, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Bye. All right. And the last but not least is Melissa.
Do we have Melissa? Hi. Yes, I'm here. I made it. I'm a newbie. You made it. You made it through the sift. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Mm. I'm good. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so you're my last one tonight. Oh, what a pretty picture you have. Wow. You're so thank glad. You. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Well, welcome. Welcome, Melissa, to our weird and wonderful family here. <laughs> <laughs> we always try to have something for everyone um do you have any patterns that you are not happy with uh something I really really struggle with is um feeling like I don't have purpose I just turned 56 and what? and you I look just... like that <laughs> 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 okay, we'll I, have uh, what she's having, right? I mean, come on. Well, I wasn't, I was never able to have kids. Instead, I had health issues, chronic health issues that started when I was young. And, um, and so never, all I ever wanted to be was a mom. I didn't want to be a career woman. My parents were like, you're going to college, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like I said, I just, I just wanted to be a mom and have a family and I don't have any of that. And so to be, um, I just struggle so much with a feeling like I don't have a purpose. Okay. That's a very typical one, by the way. Okay. Lots of people, uh, have readings about, I have no purpose or I don't feel like I have a purpose. <coughs> excuse me all right let me have a look do, 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 do. i've got a man standing here for you i don't feel this is dad is dad in spirit no no it's not dad i feel well actually there's two men standing here there's one who's younger and then there's a grandfather who's the younger male um I'm not sure. I feel like it's one of your friends from way back when. You were friends in high school. Good friends in high school. And he wants you to know he's passed. And he's waving hello to you. Okay. Um, okay, grandfather on your mom's side. What's his first name? Pete. Pete. Hello, Pete. Hello, Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi. Oh, well, here he is. All right. Did he like the water and boats and all kinds of like he's showing me water and boats? No, he um, my grandparents and my mom, uh, my my grandpa was in Dachau. He survived Dachau. So they came by boat to the U.S. Oh, OK. Wow. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's that's pretty amazing. Because he's showing me boats. Okay, that's validation. All right. So let's go. What is Melissa's purpose? What is her purpose? So let's go into a past life. I'm just looking at a pair of eyes. Okay. You're some sort of insect and you're looking at me with a pair of eyes. And that's I'm creepy. saying, well, sorry. That's creepy. Why? That's not creepy. Because <laughs> I, I don't like insects. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you were, uh, got, hey, I don't know if anybody else is down south, but these cicadas, oh, my God, they got my husband on the run. Oh, <laughs> Lord. You know, in England, they don't really have, a, my husband's from London. In England, they don't really have a lot of insects. Oh, my God. These things. He is like not even leaving the house. That's one way to keep him at home. Anyway, <clears throat> I've got, uh, you're looking at me like a pair of eyes. And I'm like, what is this? Why? You're like, I just don't know. Your eyes look really sad. <clears throat> you're not willing to show me the rest of your body at the moment. Your eyes. And I'm saying, what is it about your eyes? What is it you want to tell me? And it's almost like you're afraid to know your purpose in a way. You're scared. 
And I'm saying, why are you scared to know your sense of purpose? And you're saying, because I may not like myself if I find out if it's something I don't like. I'm like, what? Okay. But um, I'm trying to get you to come out and talk to me. I'm like, come on, come talk to me. Now you're out. Okay, you're a fly. <laughs> Here we go. You're like, people don't like flies. And Nobody. I'm like, well, it's so funny because I'm like, actually... My kids do. They call them friend flies and they chase them all around the room. And we try to catch friend fly and we can never catch him no matter how many times he lands on the window. Um, and we open the door and we say, go be free, be free, be free. Um, so you're like, no, no, nobody likes me. So I feel like I, when you look at yourself in the mirror, like we're looking at your picture and we're like, you're so pretty, right? But you don't see yourself that way. Um, this may be a little difficult, but I feel that you don't see the value and you don't see yourself in the way that everybody else sees you. It's almost like you don't even want to look at yourself. Do you understand that? I've lost her. Are you still there? No, no I'm still here. Okay. I've hit I, you, right? I've got you. You don't even I, want to look at yourself. I had some really hard things when I was a kid. Okay. You don't see what we see. Um, a baby brother died when I was eight. Okay. And I actually, um, I thought I needed to kill myself so that I could take care of him because I've just always been very empathetic. And all I could think of was we have each other, but he doesn't have anybody. So I need to die and take care of him as his big, big sister gotcha he wasn't supposed to stay and so I you know I, I went through all those things essentially by myself because people think that kids don't understand Okay. And I think, you know, likely with all the things that I buried. Okay. Of what I was living through, all, you know, all the emotions that I didn't know what to do is, I think that's how my, um, how it evolved into like autoimmune diseases. Okay. Self-loathing. And what I'm getting as I look at the past life as a fly, first of all, I'm sorry that happened, but that he wasn't supposed to stay. He doesn't stay in any lifetime that you guys have together, okay? This is a pattern. And I feel like you two were so closely connected that this is a contract for you once and for all to love yourself, okay? Maybe, just maybe, she'll get it in this lifetime. That's what your purpose is, okay? Now, a lot of times, it always boils down to self-love. But as I look at you as the fly, and it's like self-disgust, self, like you just hate the, you know, you hate the body you're in. And you don't even want to be here on the earth plane. Like, I feel that very strongly. Now, maybe you've come to terms with having to be here on the earth plane, but there's also like, <coughs> I need a sense of purpose. So I have a reason to stick around. Do you understand that? Um, I've struggled with that feeling a lot. Um, okay. I actually, um, the best thing to happen to me was that in January of 2021, I got a puppy mm -hmm. and the first six months were hell 
Right. But, right. I mean, I was literally cussing myself out for the first six months because I, I fell and broke my wrist playing with her in the snow. So I had a puppy and one good arm. Oh, but she no. has, oh, she has brought me so much love and the way she looks at me, the way she just, um, just loves me. And she's just taught me so much patience and she's just, she's, I just can't imagine life without her ever at this point. Well, so you two have been together in quite a few past lives, by the way. And her thing is always to help you find this self-love. That is your sense of purpose. It's to actually be able to look in the mirror and say, I like what I see and I am valuable. I am worthy. Okay. Cause you don't see that at all on some level you and the reason you have this thing about your brother right is you it's survivor's guilt right why should i survive why should he have to leave maybe i should have been the one that should have left and let him live right but that's not how it goes so you've actually got a lot of ptsd from the survivor's guilt i'm picking that up very strongly <clears throat> now even though your puppy has come into your lifetime to make you stick around on the earth plane you still have to <coughs> excuse me you still have to find this self-worth and this self-love so again you've got to dig deep to find this because even from the fly lifetime and let me tell you how far back that that goes when we're like insects on this earth plane we're like millions of years old right this has been going on all that time and your brother in this lifetime he is checked out of here early again which he does in every lifetime but you just don't seem to get it he wants to shake you he wants they all do they want to shake you like you've got to get it she doesn't see she doesn't understand she doesn't see her own value and, and you've got to fix that first before you move forward and do anything else. Well, and I've, it, what has played into that making it worse is that after having a long career, um, the company I worked for got sold and then I took some time off and then COVID hit and I've yet to find my place. Will she find her place? You're not going to find, okay, so because like attracts like, right? Because this is such a strong lesson for you to learn, what I'm getting from your grandfather, <coughs> excuse me, is that you've got to fix this first before you can move forward, okay? So, if you come to the CTT or you're listening to the recordings, because that's my thing. That's what I know that fixes things, right? There's other ways to fix things. There's like Reiki healing. There's hypnotherapy. There's BQH. There's QHHT. There's muscle testing. There's all those things. But this is what I know. You know, you're really going to have to work on your self-love and developing it because you are just, um, you're, 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 you know, you really are so disconnected from yourself. And, and I just feel that so strongly. You don't even want to know yourself, right? Where most of us are trying to really know who we are. You don't even want to know. I don't, I don't know that it's to that extent. I mean, I've, you know, starting in 2003, I started taking solo trips to Italy because I was like, the only, this is something I can control. I can't control when I, you know, meet somebody, meet the right person and have a family. But if I don't go to Italy, that'll be a regret on my deathbed. And I started going, I made it an annual thing. And I just had uh, such a passion for it. I mean, just to experience that just. Okay, one but hold on, uh, let me stop you there. That's a conscious mind experience, right? 
are you do you find when you're there though you're actually connecting with your soul and you come home and you can say you know what i'm standing in the mirror and i love me right well i try and be more um selfless versus self-centered self-focused okay that's not going to fix your self-love issue right being selfless is a conscious see okay i got you we all think we understand this with our conscious minds right so even if you sit here with your conscious mind on a daily basis, doing positive affirmations, it doesn't fix what's going on on the soul level in the energy field. So if you're sitting here, not saying you, but I'm saying in general, anybody, I will have a good day today. I love me. I, you know, I am blessed. I am this, I am that, blah, 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 blah. But in the inside, you can't even stand and look at yourself in the mirror that conscious mind is only surface sort of healing, right? This is so deep rooted all the way back to the lifetime of the fly. You have got to fix this in this lifetime because you will not be able to move forward on a soul level until you find your self love, right? So your experience going to Italy or traveling or, you know, that's a wonderful thing that you did. I love Italy. It's a great place. I personally like Sardinia. That's my most favorite place ever. I like the water. It's warm. The people are nice. They're friendly. They're not a load of drunks. It's a friendly, friendly place, right? But <clears throat> when you go there, if you can't come back and say and look in the mirror and wholeheartedly with absolute 100% intention and look in that mirror and say, you know what? I like what I see. I love me. I love my life and I love who I am. Then going to Italy is just, you know, one of those things, right? It's not fixing the issue. You're going to have to go down on an energy level and you're going to have to fix it at a soul level because this is something your soul has struggled with for millions of years, right? Finding this self-love. So you really, you may not have another opportunity in another lifetime. There, you know, Liz Cross may not be psychic in another lifetime. You may not come across this information again, right? So I would seriously try to work on your self-love. Yeah, I think it's come into play more often where I felt like I I think I've been in different positions where I felt like I was prepared to sacrifice myself. Okay. Because I wasn't because I'm not a mom. You're not supposed to be a mom in this lifetime because being a mom Right. As you know, and as every mom in this room tonight knows, and every parent, it's not just mom, it's dad too. It is freaking hard work, right? I I can tell you, hand on heart, I collapse into bed every night. I pass out, right? In fact, it's like way past my bedtime now. I should have been passed out at least an hour ago. <laughs> but I'm one, I'm having fun. But seriously, right? Some lifetimes you're not supposed to have children because the issue is so big that having children is a distraction in this lifetime. And you've done that. You've been there, done that. You know that having children, your soul does, that having children is not going to repair the issue. Therefore, it's had to strip everything down where it's just you and that mirror. OK, and you've got to be able to look in that mirror and you've got to be able to like what you see. So I hope that helps you. It's just you in the mirror in this lifetime. Yeah, your dog's there. You can hold your dog and and the dog can look at itself in the mirror. And right. And it's here and the dog is here to help you. 
but it's just you and the mirror in this lifetime. And until this is resolved, nobody else is coming in. Why well, wouldn't let anybody in anyway? Right. <laughs> well, there you go. So look, I hope that helped you. Go through the recordings if you can. You're more than welcome to come to the group on Mondays if you can. I, you, as soon as you start to heal this issue, things will start unraveling for you and it will start to become better. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for being here. Mr. Reality, are you still here? I think it's time to I'm go. Turning in. Yes, it's past my bedtime. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Are you, what what remote viewing stuff do you have lined up for your dreams tonight? We got a lot of places to go trying to build a scalar healing box. So we'll get back on that project. Thanks everybody. It's great seeing you all, especially on a weekend night. And I wish everybody a wonderful weekend and happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Happy Mother's Day to you, Liz. Thanks for letting me be a part of this. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, I bought myself some chocolate covered strawberries. Mm, enjoy. <laughs> Trust my husband to buy a gift for me. We've been together for so long. I just, I know. I'm just like, you know what? I'll just buy my own gift. I'm going to buy chocolate covered strawberries. We'll all enjoy those. They'll be eaten. They'll be used. And we're good to go. Right? <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for being here. And Mr. Reality, thank you for sh showing up tonight and helping me. I really, really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Great seeing you. And We'll see you on Monday or Here we recordings. Bye, Thank you. everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Love you all. Love you all.